Okay, so nice to have you. Welcome back from the break. This lecture 14. So, let's see. And what's the mood today? Uh, refreshed, right? Yeah. No. yeah. Oh, I thought it would be an overwhelming yes, refreshed. What happened? Tell me. Get another one way to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another week. Then there will be another week requested. Yeah. <laughs> and three, and it will just continue in an infinite regression. This series has to be terminated at some point. <laughs> the break has to be over. I'm sorry. Welcome back. You look refreshed. Don't worry. We'll pick up gradually from where we start. And in that case, alive or dead? No. Alive or dead? Alive. <laughs> yeah, one of you said it should be sleeping. Yeah, so. But it is now alive. Okay. Alan told me not to include um, the Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates on the quiz. I got you guys. <laughs> so I obey. <laughs> okay. That is by applying a time translation operator backwards to the quiz that I already set last week. <laughs> okay, so um, we will continue today as usual. There will be normal hints and preparation for homework and things like that. I've done a few shifts. I still encourage you to take advantage of my office hours. Many of you come and many come whenever you want, which is exactly what I said. Whenever I am there, I see some of you just here, yeah, and I like that. So come and send email and things like that. So <laughs> when I'm not able to attend to you immediately, you know what I do. I tell you, ah, let's get another time. So, um, something else that is important. You went home. Things may not be so wonderful as expected for everyone. Um, so if there are issues, family issues, friends, things like that, that trouble you and may have impact on your studies, please speak with me or with any other faculty. Is that okay? So that we can work out things to help you. We don't want you to carry the burden alone. We're interested in you being alive, you being healthy, then learning can happen, right? <laughs> if you don't come, I lose my job, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, and if you come and you're not healthy and happy, then my job becomes more difficult. So for our sake, let's make sure that you are okay. Is that okay? <laughs> That's important for me. So um, because of that, things like homework that um, one or two voice that it's a bit challenging for them, which is very okay, like some questions have shifted. Um, homework seven you not today but Friday Thursday so that you have enough time if you didn't just so that everyone is fine and then the homework eight that is supposed to be based on today's material and Thursday's material since it is quite new chapter four I've also shifted it homework eight so that you have enough time to get used to what we want to do the three D stuff is that okay I believe you will do much better when there is more time for it okay <clears throat> Yes. Oh, so yeah, let's get sorry. the question. <laughs> so is homework eight or is homework eight the last homework for the exam or we have nine also? Good question. There will be nine, but nine is so similar to eight. Yeah, good question. So if you, eight and nine we do the same day? Yes, okay. close. They'll be very close. But you will find it easier to do eight and nine together when you have enough time than to try to do eight by Thursday. Because the material we are covering this week is needed for eight and nine. And if I give enough time for you to understand the material this week, it will help. So good question.
Okay, so let's work it out together. Write down the Laplacian and Cartesian coordinates. <coughs> the Laplacian is this one, right? So we need to remember to have the square right there. So in Cartesian, it is even a definition. So that will be partial squared, right? Partial x squared. It wants me to go slow. So I'm going to do it on. Yeah, so for quiz one, what did it say? Laplacian. Partial squared. Partial x squared. Plus partial squared. Partial y squared. Plus partial, partial c squared. Number two, what did it say? Okay, I can actually use this board. Momentum, write down the three components of momentum in Cartesian. So, Px will then be, of course, negative i h bar partial partial x. Py should then be negative i h bar partial partial y. And Pz should then be negative i h bar partial so, quick one. If somebody doesn't write the negative IH bar, what should we do? Lose points, right? How many? Yeah. <laughs> because it's not P, right? And we've done PX all along, right? And we had that. So try, all I'm saying is try to keep those um, when needed. And at times you can drop them but not in this case, <laughs> when you need to write them out correctly. Yeah. Like when you are testing what it does on an operator, this is a constant, yes? So it, it can be dropped and you know what you're doing. But in this case, I think 
a full for full points you should put them okay i'm just saying it now again but next quiz when things like this are needed points will be lost but not for today okay so that you wake up <laughs> all right how about hydrogen atom for the hydrogen yeah so is v equals v of rt why not it's only r dependent very good so and we're going to use all this today that's why and what is the ground state energy so it is not no Okay, you knew this from high school. So let's continue. And the calculations using Schrodinger equation give the same result, which is cool. <laughs> it's just one of the greatest results in early quantum mechanics. So, back. Now, we do our usual thing. Let's see. I will do a lot on the board and then we do some exercises getting ready. And what I want to do on the board is to set up the radial equation and the, and the angular. angular equation so that we can then solve them for various potentials. And I'll be anxious to start with the hydrogen so that hydrogen atom, then you see, and then as time permits and as I see understanding, I will add 3D harmonic oscillator and infinite square well, 3D and things like that. But I want to make sure. So in this class, we will get to the angular equation and the radial equation. And from next class, start solving for various potential energies. That's our plan. So let's see if we get to use the board there, I would like to see what it is recording and then we know and continue. <clears throat> so just a quick look at the recording. All right, so it seems to focus on the board and that is good. So let's continue with the board. So, and some people call this, like I, we had 3D QN, or quantum mechanics in 3D, okay? <coughs> so, I've already said what we want to do together, and it will be nice, we work together and check and be sure we can write it, the more often we write it the more we understand and get used to it. So first of all, SE in 3D, okay? What might that look like? Of course, it has to be what it is, IH bar partial partial T of the big psi, right? Equals what, everyone? Negative H bar squared over T. Uh, yeah. Correct, actually. So because you added that, let me just show what it gives and then we add what Tanak wanted us to add. He wanted to express the Hamiltonian explicitly. Is that okay? Yeah, that's what you wanted to do. So let's do that because it's correct, right? <laughs> I can say I hit bar partial partial T psi of RT equals then let's do what he wanted. Negative, go for it. Negative. H bar squared. H bar squared over 2m. Two then our, so we want it in 3D. Location. The gradient is different. So this is the Laplacian squared. Okay? Then psi plus what? V. Because it is picking up. The Hamiltonian operator, the Hamiltonian is stuff plus stuff. What is stuff? The Hamiltonian is the sum of the potential. So, this then is the kinetic energy operator. 
we are just saying plus v of psi yeah the big psi equals e psi so now we've made it an eigenvalue equation yeah so this then is Schrodinger equation in three okay so if it is time independent time independent se in 3d what might that be it would just be what let's write it explicitly okay watch yeah Chris, negative yeah. H bar squared correct H bar squared. yes negative h bar squared over 2m the Laplacian, yes, I can, con yes, you've got it, so, plus V, plus v. So and what kind of V, at this point it becomes important to say that the V is time independent, thank you Grace, equals then E, psi of just some coordinate, some spatial coordinate, space, not time, okay, so we've got that. So our next step is obvious. What is this Laplacian? We wrote it in the quiz in Cartesian coordinates. But because of symmetry, there is a lot of spherical symmetry, symmetry in 3D. For example, hydrogen atom is an electron circling the nucleus, one proton. So because of the spherical symmetry, stuff just goes around one point. We can do a lot better with spherical coordinates. And therefore, we write this Laplacian in spherical coordinates, and this is important. So we'll get back to it again and again and again. So we better get it right. So it will be one over r squared, yeah? Partial r, and that is important. Then you have your r squared right there. I like to do it. Here is the way I like to do it. I like to put my wave function right there so that when I'm doing partial, partial r, for example, it makes more sense in my mind, plus 1 over r squared sine theta. You'll be able to do this easily because we're going to work on this again and again. So sine theta, partial, partial theta. There is <coughs> sine theta right there and partial, partial theta of our wave function. So we can have, that's the first piece, the second piece, and there is the third piece. So what is that third piece? One over r squared, sine squared, theta, yeah, partial, partial, so partial squared of psi, partial phi squared, yeah. And this is in brackets. Okay. I hope that is correct. It looks correct to me. So I can print it so that I write it much better. So take a look at it. So, because we are going to do a lot with it. For instance, one will be tempted to, is that allowed? Why not? It's partial. There's a partial derivative. And to keep things tidy, you see what we've done. These brackets. So all those nice, nice mathematical solutions you saw in the text and you've seen before, are come from here. Because there's the radial part, there's the angular part, and there are two angular parts, theta and phi. And all of them have their nice methods of arriving at solutions. All of them we could solve before quantum mechanics came up. <laughs> the methods for solving with solving equations, differential equations in these coordinates were already available before quantum mechanics. So it was a matter of rearranging our work in a way that fits known solutions. That's what we want to do. So that's our second point. We just got our Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Are we happy? Is 
there anything missing there? Check, check, check. We're working together. All right. So what might be our third point? That's class exercise now. You do it as I do it on our paper. And that is write the time independent Schrodinger equation in 3D spherical coordinates. It will be here for you, right? Except that I need it over there. So start it while I do mine on the board. Yeah. Step three. Spherical coordinates. 3D. 3D. Time independent Schrodinger equation. Spherical coordinates. Okay. So that shouldn't be hard. Negative h bar squared over 2n because we want to write the Laplacian. Yeah, we just did it. Okay, so 1 over r squared partial, partial r, r squared right there, partial we put our side. Plus one over r squared sine theta. Okay, and another one there. Partial, partial theta. And our side. Okay. Plus one over r squared sine squared theta. Partial. Partial phi should be phi squared of psi. And we can close our square bracket plus our v of psi, it is equal to e psi. Anyone else done? Maybe you did it a long time ago. So we've got our. Yes. Shouldn't you have a partial in between the 1 over r squared sine theta and this the one? sine? This one? Yeah, right there. Oh, did I miss it? From Let's see from behind there. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's right there. So I skipped it while speaking. So 1 over r squared sine theta. Thank you. So I skipped it while speaking. Yes. Okay. Good. And right there. Good. Plus 1 over r squared sine theta. Yes, partial, partial theta. Then sine. Yeah, there's a theta right there. Speaking. So let me check my work pre from previous. That's why I like to write it out there. Yes. Partial, yes, sine theta, very good. Yep. Okay. You're happy, I'm happy. Now, what is the next thing? I told our goal is to get the radial equation and the angular equation. How are we going to do that? Separation yes. Separation of, variables. separation of variables. Now that we got the 3D time independent Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates. All right. So for separation of variables, that's the Jared step, right? <laughs> Jared and some separation of variables. I'll just write sep va ja, yeah, <laughs> for Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Sounds good, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So to make our work interesting, we write out what we want to do. We, we claim that our psi is a function of r, theta, and phi. And we redefine it to be 
two functions, r of r, big R of r, I'm trying to use the same symbol as the textbook so that it is easier for you. But on my slides, I will switch to you. I think the textbook also switches to you, which makes it fit the way many things have been solved in the past. But you wouldn't be exactly R. You would be big R over little R, just to make things work. Okay. So y of theta t. Are we happy? So now let's put it in together. The other time I asked it to work, and now we can put it in together because I want to say some things so that we shorten the time it takes. So to put it in, look, if we have partial, partial R, let's watch. If we have partial, partial R, the theta terms will be killed, right? Yeah, we got that. So let's put it in, and it will just be Together, negative h power over 2m, yeah? What is killed by this partial r's there? Y. Everything there will be killed. And so, since it is product rule, the y will stay as a constant there, yeah? Out there. And then we have our R squared, partial, well, at this point it can be a full derivative, and you will see. So B, the R here, into R squared, D, what will be here? What will be here, please? It's important for everyone to see why. R. Y R. I want to hear it in your own words. Because the psi only, only depends on R. Correct. The psi has two parts. The part that depends only on R and the part that depends on theta and phi. And these partial derivatives, partial R, will pick out this. Is that okay? Wherever you have the partial derivatives, you will pick out the one that depends on that particular um, uh, derivative. So that's why we have that. So similarly, what is spared as a constant over here? R. R. Big R. Very good. So we've got a big R over R squared sine theta partial partial theta then sine theta partial something, you tell me what will that be? Because we've got R there, so what will that be? Y. Why, why? <laughs> I was waiting to use that alliteration. <laughs> I got to use it. <laughs> why, why? Yeah, so I pause here. People are trying to check, and I like that. I like the check, so yeah, go for it. Why, why? Same reason as this. Y is the only one that depends on theta and phi, and so partial theta will pick it up. Here, I made it full derivative. Why can't I make it full? Theta derivative here. Because there's still phi. Ah, I have a wonderful class. You got it. There is also phi there. Yes, these are the little needed things that I wanted to make sure everyone gets. Plus, what's going to be upstairs now? Again, R. Very good. R over R squared sine squared theta. Okay. Then partial squared. Partial phi squared of y. No need wasting your time for that. Plus, what's going to be here? V r y equals e r y. Okay. Step four. Oh, yeah, we we'll step four. <laughs> step five. Let's say 5a. We'll just do it quickly. 
I wish I can have, let me do, so divide everything by Ry. So I like to do it term by term. This divided by Ry. <laughs> this divided by Ry. This divided by Ry. Same here. So what do we get? Yeah, we write it out, negative h bar squared, and the writing out is deliberate. It makes us used to what we are working on. So divided by r, y, what do we get there? 1 over r, do you see that? 1 over big r. Do you permit me to move slightly forward? Look, there is r squared here, r squared here, r squared here. Can we just pull it over here, please? Is that okay? So there's R, one of the R squared is also here, is also here. So let's just go faster and put it out here. Are we happy? Let's make sure it's there on your own. Okay. So we can now write D, the R, R squared, DR, by DR, plus what happens? What is left here, please? I don't want to miss it. <laughs> I'm on the board. Oh, no. So R goes, and we are left with what? One over Y. One over Y. Do we all see that? It's one over Y. One over Y. In that case, hey, let's 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 learn to go a little bit faster. In that case, since there is also R there, they look similar in terms of R. Here would also be 1 over y. So we can put them together. Is that okay? I don't want to write 1 over y twice. So I can then make a square bracket. Okay, a bigger bracket. And have, what are we left with? So the r goes 1 over, and then, and we have pulled out this r squared. You remember? So we are left with what? Please tell me so that 1 over sine sine theta, yeah, partial, partial theta into sine theta, partial y, partial theta, plus what? 1 over sine squared. 1 over sine squared theta, okay, partial squared y, should be y, not cancel. Okay, y partial c squared. Yeah. What else? Let's put it nicely. It's a big bracket there. Plus what? Those go v equals what? E. Very good. We also need an square bracket. Yes, we need a square bracket here. There was two MR squared. Yes, 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 yes. So it should be here. Good job. <laughs> yes. Are we happy? Next, what do we do to keep things tidy? You know where we are heading to? We want to separate everything that is dependent on radial position R separate from everything dependent on angular position theta and phi. Is that okay? That's what we want to do. Yes. You okay. multiply by 2m, negative 2m r Very squared. good. Yes, that's somebody who was reading. Good. Everyone was reading. So they caught us still now. <laughs> Multiplied this. Because it actually makes sense. Look at it. It's out there. Multiply each term by negative 2mr squared. We can do it mentally before we write it down. So when we do that, what happens? What are we left? What is the square bracket left with? h bar squared. No, it is multiplied by negative 2mr squared over h bar squared. Yeah, I'm sorry. Nothing. 
going nothing. away. That goes away. See, that's the point. Here goes away. If you do times negative 2 m r squared over here first. Yeah. So all that goes away. Ah! So only this, pick those terms. And we can do separation of variables. Are we together? All right. <clears throat> so you're going to remind me what this is as we transfer it over there. So that was step 5b, which 5b, which was times negative 2m r squared over h bar times part of cross. <laughs> How do we do that multiplication? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You get a free radical. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So help me pull out what we have in the first bracket. Yeah? What what will it be in the first bracket? One, One over R. Continue. You have it in the paper? D over DR. One over R. D D R. Yeah? R squared D R. So D D R. I thought there would be a partial, partial R, partial, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see what we have. Oh yeah, they are full derivatives, you see? <laughs> yes, they are. Okay, I'm really teaching in a relaxed way. I don't want to carry, think I want you to do it after I have shown you how to do it. Yeah, so let me enjoy it for today. Go for it, one over R. Go for it. D D R. D D R. Yes. R squared. R squared. Thank you. D big R over D R by D little R, and we can put this in bracket. Hey, thank you. You know what? We're going to solve this the radial equation for hydrogen shortly, if not today, Wednesday. So sorry, Thursday. So we have that first term. Plus what? One over y. One over y, yes. Continue, please. That's a big bracket. So, one over sine theta, d d theta. Sure. One over sine theta, partial, partial theta. Sine theta partial y partial theta. Is that correct? Yes. Plus another one over y, right? Uh, okay, we can pull it all out here, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have one over r squared. No, we had all the r's. Here. <laughs> one over sine squared theta. Yeah. Partial squared. Partial phi squared plus plus so we had plus v right we can send everything there was e minus v and we can now multiply it by negative two m so this is not minus this is times negative 2m r squared over h bar squared. Are we okay? That's what we wanted. Good. So if we multiply that, look. So that's E, just to be clear. If we multiply that, we end up with negative 2m r squared over h bar squared into v minus e. Do you agree? which we can pull in here to make everything equal to zero. Is that okay? Do I have yep. to repeat that? Yep. So let's summarize, let's make everything, let's make two pieces, two big pieces equal to zero. Yeah, two big pieces that have something to do with radial position and angular position. This stuff, watch it, watch it, watch it. This stuff 
has something to do with radial position. So it belongs here. Do you agree? And this can stand by itself. And mathematically, if we take it over here, it will be equal to zero. Let's do that. One over r, d the r into r squared dr dr, yeah, plus v minus e, yeah, into 2m r squared over h bar squared, which we can keep together here. Plus one over y. If you're going to keep, uh, if you're going to do v minus e, then it would have to be minus again. Sorry? Yeah. If you're going to do v minus e, then it would have to be minus again. Oh, be yes. Minus. If we take it over here, look, as it is, it will be minus e. Then we take it over there. So we've got a minus e minus v. If we take it over there, it becomes a plus e minus v. But if we're going to have V minus E, as is it, minus. Yes. That's the essence of doing it together. So, and then, <clears throat> 1 over Y into 1 over sine theta, partial, partial theta, sine theta, Partial y, partial theta, yep, plus 1 over sine squared theta, partial squared, partial t squared y. Let's close that and let's have that equals to 0. Do we agree? Good question. So I should have another one here for it to make meaning. And the curly bracket to answer your question fully is to keep separate in our minds clearly everything dependent on the radial coordinate r, little r, and everything dependent on radial coordinate theta, sorry, angular coordinates theta and phi. Any question? All right. We're almost there. That's step six. It's done, actually. Let me make, so curly brackets as nearly asked. Curly bracket. Curly bracket. I'm just repeating. <laughs> curly bracket. Curly bracket. And in terms of the curly bracket, if A plus B equals zero, it means that A equals negative B, right? Now, furthermore, and this is important, <laughs> if you have stuff, functions, that exhibit this property of A and B, then those functions are each equal to a constant, and we call it separation constant. And so we are going to claim immediately that this is equal to separation constant L into L plus 1. And this is equal to separation constant negative L into L plus 1. Why? For reasons that he's going to show us later. <laughs> <laughs> Kata, you did a good reading. Thank you. Can I show you some of the reason now? A little bit of it. Did you hear Carter's answer? That's what the author said. For reasons he will show us later. But I can show you now. The reason is that L will end up being 
angular momentum quantum number. And it will turn out that a nice operator, the square of the angular momentum will have eigenvalues L plus L into L plus one H bar. <laughs> so if you have this, it is going to be L into L plus one. That's the reason. And this is why this connects nicely to our next class exercise. What is this nice angular momentum that shares eigen, it shares eigenvalues, so they should be psi here again. So negative, that's for that. And then we put our psi after, okay? So it's an eigenvalue equation. What is this L squared that is so cool? Such that the eigenfunction, its eigenfunction is also the eigenfunction of the angular coordinates, radial coordinate, yeah? That's all we want to show. And that's why the next reading is section three. And what is section three? Angular momentum. Angular momentum. So to get ready for that class exercise, is making use of something that is used for angular momentum. We start with linear momentum. So we're going to do some commutation relations with linear momentum. After all, what is angular momentum? From your classical mechanics. Define angular momentum from classical mechanics. Hint. Use linear momentum. So tell me the definition of angular momentum in terms of linear momentum to motivate us into doing some work with linear momentum in preparation for full angular momentum. Is it B cross R? Correct, R cross T. R cross T. Yes. <laughs> so we are going to work with versions of R cross P in terms of the commutation of position with various components of the linear momentum, x times p sub x. That's what we want to do now and see whether they commute so that our life will be easier when we are calculating angular momentum and the square of it. One minute break, then we continue. Good job, the attention was super. Yeah, and working together, I felt really relaxed mentally. I didn't have to carry everything along because I knew you would be checking it. So thank you. For the first time or? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. Not for the first time. I was gonna say. Wow. wow. Yeah. 
He probably, probably catch on it. On fire before you. Oh, he Spider probably explodes the room at the speed that you're going at. Yeah. And I played Mario Party 8 last night. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I almost won. No. How many stars did you get? I got three. Dang. Yeah, but then my friend stole them. Like, at the end, you know how they have mm -hmm. stars? Yeah, he had one, and he got awarded two. And then he had more coins than me, so he won. Oh. I'm <laughs> so mad. Is that how you got second place and won that? Bag of <laughs> you want to try one of these Oreos? No. That's popping candy. In okay, it. are we all back? So, like, you know, like pop rocks? Very yeah. good. <clears throat> Welcome back. <clears throat> Finish your tweets. <laughs> Tell them the cool stuff you're learning in quantum mechanics. <laughs> it's very good coordinates that you're no longer scared. Of Schrodinger equation and spherical coordinates. You can even do it on a quiz. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So here we are. Things apply. Our bra and cat work. And dr would have to be cubed because it's 3D. Just skip forward. Our inner product continues uninterrupted with just d cube r. That's it. And we can choose various coordinates. We could do Cartesian for our square integrability or quadratic integrability so that our statistical interpretation may work. That's it, there. And now, maybe you want to revise some integration using spherical coordinates? <laughs> you will need it. Yeah. But it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be bad because the product, sorry, the operators make our lives easier. The operators will just spit out the eigenvalues. That's why if you've read um, the reading assignment the way you were instructed to read in the foreword, which I made you read the foreword twice, <laughs> the questions are actually part of the text. So you notice in some of the questions in the part you've read, he says, do not do any calculation because eigenvalues can just spit out the answer in one line. And if you don't, it's three pages. <laughs> You saw it? Yes. <laughs> that is the beauty of what we want to do. Okay. So, this is the class exercise. Because we know that we are going to work with angular momentum. And angular momentum is R cross P. Yeah? And various components. So, go for it now. Find the commutation. You know, XPX. We've already done it, and we showed it to be explicitly IH bar. We use the test function. Do the same thing. Put a test function. It's right there for you. And XPY simply means X partial partial Y. You can drop H negative IH bar for now. Yeah and get the commutation of x and py explicitly. Class exercise, group work. I'm going around to, to get help. There's a test function there, so go for it. Show me explicitly. Don't tell me the answer. I know you know the answer. <laughs> group work, please. Okay. So write what commutation means. X times Partial, partial y on the wave function minus partial, partial y times x on the wave function. That's the meaning of the commutation. Then work it out to see what you get. Thank <laughs> you. 
started. So write what computation means. X computation means minus B Y. I really have computation means A B minus B A. Okay. So and if you were to oh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 that's
x. I'm just going to keep looking and see what happens. You can drop this so that it doesn't come in the way. Okay. So it doesn't come in the way of these other minus. Mm. And now you got to your partial uh, partial partial Oh, I think I see what you're saying. So but this are this term will lead to two yeah. terms. Can you partial see that? Mm. Okay, I have zero. The not partial 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 you do the partial 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 when you move by side through, you have side times yeah. x. You have this side times x side, and then you have oh, okay. the product of that. Uh, I don't know why uh, that's a word. So, about that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 and then, I feel like that would cancel to just x of d side dy minus x d side dy. Yes, this is fine. I don't know why that's a uh, way it is. So then, uh, oh, this yeah. must cancel. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
So by definition, this simply means xpy minus x p. Sorry, so xpy minus p sub y x. And we say use use a test function, which gives that, which then equals x. We can drop the negative ih bar, yeah? So drop negative ih bar. You put your x there. Partial, partial y psi minus, see? Partial, partial y of x and psi. That's what you get, which is equal to x, yeah? Partial, partial y minus, there will be two pieces here because of the product rule. So x partial, partial y psi plus, so you've got your x psi partial, partial y of x. This goes to zero. This is the same as this, and everything is zero. Any question? <coughs> Yeah. Just the way to do it. <coughs> so, so they commute. It means XPY commutes with XPZ. You will not need to do it for PZ. Why is this? potentially important, somebody to remind us that as an operator by definition is R cross P. Let me check your vector algebra. What is R cross P? What's the meaning? Get me the pieces. Do you remember? Cross product? What are the pieces in cross product? Magnitude of the vector times sine of theta. Sorry? The Go for it. The magnitude of R times magnitude of P times the sine of theta. The angle between them. That's the easy way to do it. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do. Yeah? That's correct. Not what you're looking for. And you can do it with matrices, right? Sorry? Exactly, with determinant. And it is the determinant that shows for the commutation. <laughs> when you do it with the determinant, then you see the commutation coming out. And you need to have flexibility with these commutations because then you write something like the L, angular momentum, you end up with pieces that are like that. And you will know which ones go to zero quickly because of this. So that's where we are heading to. Okay? So let's take that a little bit further. <clears throat> okay. We are learning notation because we will use them a lot. What's going on there? We just did the commutation relation of x and p sub y. And I added x and p sub z will also be zero. Now here is a, a neat way of putting all that together. What does that mean then? What is in the red? R sub j comma p sub k equals i h bar. What is the symbol? Sorry? Yeah. So, it's a very nice shorthand telling you two possibilities, zero and one, yeah? So, it's a nice delta symbol that tells you when J and K are equal, you get one. When they are different, 
zero, which fits what we just calculated explicitly, yeah? When x, p, y, commutation zero. When x, p, z, p sub z, commutation zero. But when x and p sub x, we get what? i h bar times one, which is i h bar. Neat notation. Yeah. And then it does this in a kind of cyclic way. Yeah, it's good. It's just nice. We'll be seeing more of that. So, having set up ourselves for calculating angular momentum, which is next reading assignment, we go further in readiness for solving the angular equation and the radial equation. So in quick summary, with the radial equation, something like hydrogen atom is considered a central potential because the electron is just orbiting around a central proton. Yeah? And so the radial equation will give us the wave function for the electron. Around it. Next example would be a 3D harmonic oscillator. Yeah? 3D. 1, 2D would just be this way. <laughs> 3D is a little bit harder too. But think of a molecule that is vibrating like an oscillator. Then you already have the 3D picture. Yeah, it's a molecule, it's vibrating that way. Yeah. And so the potential energy will allow us to solve again with that radial equation. What about the things that are having some kind of angular dependence and things like that? What do we do with that? Well, what happens? Remember, if we solve the radial equation, we can easily get the eigenvalues Make a negative of it, and they become the eigenvalues of the angular equation. You remember that? Yeah. But what happens when the hydrogen atom itself is plucked away? Sorry, when the hydrogen electron, the electron of the hydrogen atom is plucked away from the proton, what happens? It's now a free electron, and we might need waves, plain waves in 3D of this form. And we call that scattering state. Something we've already done in 1D when there was a free electron plane wave, you see? So building up, repeating what we've done, but now in 3D, okay? And this is where we got to. We did this today. <clears throat> we got the spherical symmetry thing done, and we have motivated ourselves to get ready for the angular momentum operator, and next class is to put in the explicit form of the potential energy into the radial equation. And this doesn't look exactly like the radial equation, but it is, it's just rearranged. Look at the, the U is now replacing dr r over little r. So just rearrange it a little bit, put the V right there, and then we solve. That's what we'll be solving when we come back um, fun. See you then. <clears throat>